Well, every once in a while, I like to challenge myself and grab my camera and a few lights and just try to make results that I think are interesting. So I'm going to show you how I use three lights to make this lighting situation happen. I'll start a little bit from the beginning. Okay, so let's start with the key light for a moment. So this will be your brightest source of light and its main point is to make sure that your subject, which in this case is me, is brighter than the background, which I think we've achieved. So right here we have a Godox 60W uh, shining to a white bed sheet, bouncing through the center piece of a five in one reflector. And it's bouncing back on me so that you have this result right here, a nice soft light. I believe this technique is called a book lighting. I mean, I like calling it sandwich lighting because it's almost like a sandwich, but it's, it's not though. But on this side we have, this is, this is I, I just realized how ridiculous this looks. This is just a regular whiteboard from like Walmart that you can get for like 20 cents or something like that. This is being used as a sort of bounce to kind of make a little bit of a fill light. So it's filling in the shadow side of my face a little bit, but not too much because I kind of like that, that moody uh, feel to my images. I'm using one light for in two ways, as a key light and a fill light. Now let's talk about the backlight. And so what's in here, if we go on top of here, is a uh, Julia Studio 160. And it's a dimmable light, so that's why I put it in here. And behind that is another Julia Studio 160. And this light is doing what this light is appearing to be doing, which is lighting up this part of the room. And so having those lights in the background, Oh, that doesn't look good at all. Let me fix this really quick. And so in this scene, it kind of looks like I'm being lit. I'm being lit by this light behind me. It doesn't really, it doesn't logically make sense, but in the film world, it kind of does how I'm being lit from this side and the light is right there. The reason why I keep that light very dim is just because if I were to have that, if I were to have like an actual bulb in there, it would just be way too bright and it would light up the room in a way that I just don't like. And the technical term for that is like overexposure. And so having that dim kind of makes it look like, you know, it's actually a light in there and not just a big white blob. And if you're wondering what my settings are, I'll leave that right there in case you wanted to pause for a second. And hey, have a blessed day and I will see you in the next video. I'm about to go stock more camera gear on Amazon. One take one dog. I don't know. What is this video?